The biggest challenges I see for franchisors in 2019 are what I would just consider societal changes. One, the customer continues to want more customization and more convenience. We see that in the restaurant space, uh, specifically around third-party delivery. That is stressing the business model of many restaurant companies. Those that adapt will grow. Those that don't will decline. So we see continuous societal changes around customization convenience. But we also see business model changes. And I think throughout the U.S. there continues to be stress and pressure on labor rates. Um, typically labor rates have crept up over years and restaurants and other concepts will accommodate those. But in more recent years there's been a political movement to have a large shift in labor rates. And those labor rates will create stress on certain business models. So that in and of itself will create disruption in the marketplace for franchisors. In 2019, there will be some political pressure on the franchise business model. Specifically, joint employer will continue to be an issue. Joint employer is a standard by which employment was defined for hundreds of years in the United States. What does that mean? In the past, direct control of an employee meant that you could hire and fire that, in that employee. As a result, you were considered the employer. Under joint employer, the term indirect control has, come, has arisen over the last few years. What does that mean? Unfortunately, none of us know what that means. So it's solved through legal courts. What does that mean if, in fact, joint employer indirect control is established? To the franchise business model, it's really an existential threat. Specifically, for franchisors, if a franchisee was sued, then that franchisor would have liability because they had in indirect control over the employee for that franchisee's act actions and activities with the employee. As a franchisee, joint employment is also problematic. Many franchisees have invested large amounts of capital into systems. They did so in order to be entrepreneurs, to, in fact, hire and fire and control employees as they normally would in operating their business model. However, if indirect control is the new establishment, then, as a result, franchisors could, under a more unionization environment, have to be negotiating union rates as well as union standards. So the employee, by definition, would actually lose control of its business.